weekend. Our next guest saying the reflation trade is back due largely to sticky inflation concerns. For more on that, I want to bring in Martin Norton, Chief Investment Officer for the Americas at Morningstar Wealth. We're looking at the market uh, falling down this morning. Dow off now about 227 points. We do have those earnings reports from the banks. We have some idiosyncratic news around some of the chip makers um, in terms of what's going on in China. But Marta, even beyond the inflation trade, I just want to actually just throw this out there because we haven't discussed it perhaps even enough uh, right now, which is I wonder how much you think the market coming into this weekend is concerned about what's actually happening in the Middle East and what may, may or may not happen with these reports around Iran. Yeah, I mean, the Middle East is brewing in the background as we're taking a look, of course, focused on U.S. sticky inflation core, and we're also focused on what's happening with earnings. But, of course, geopolitical risk has been on the rise. That's been the case for the past few years with the war in Ukraine and now with the, you know, concerns around what's happening in the Middle East. So I think that's certainly one of the forces that we see at play within the oil market and is certainly a force behind the action that we're seeing for energy stocks. And I think that uncertainty around supply um, has, has a bit of a tailwind um, just because these, these issues aren't going away. On the inflation trade or, or lack of trade, what is, what is the trade to be made? What is the investment to be made in this environment, given what we're seeing? Well, the trade that we're seeing people make, especially in the wake of Wednesday's uh, report, is everything with a hint of rate sensitivity, utilities, banks down, energy stocks ascendant, and, of course, duration being punished. And so, uh, you know, I think the question is how enduring that trade is. From our perspective, there is some uncertainty there. And so what we're focused on is looking for investments that can survive or, or thrive in a range of different scenarios, but are also undergirded by strong valuations. And so that takes us out when we're thinking about valuations, that takes us largely out of the big tech area and moves us into some of these markets that have been a little bit more overlooked. So say consumer staples, a very defensive area of the market, trading at roughly fair value from our estimation, a reasonable place to be if you're concerned about um, any sort of you know market sell-off. Uh, consumer staples tend to be more defensive in that environment. So we think there's a lot of opportunities there. Um, uh, markets that respond in different ways to the uncertainties that we're facing. What do you do about big tech? What do you do about the, the Magnificent Seven, the, the Fancy Four, the Fabulous Five? <laughs> Yeah, any, way you, any, any, any particular name that you want to pick. You know, broadly speaking, tech looks overvalued to us. And it's looked that way for a long time. And if there's one thing we know about technology and, and, and the markets broadly is that valuation isn't necessarily a timing indicator. But as we're starting to move to these areas where valuations are so extreme, I think there is room for disappointment. And that's something that we're particularly concerned about when we just take a look at the market concentration. So 30 cents of every dollar, if you're in an S&P 500 tracker, is going to those big 10 companies. And when we've seen that levels of concentration in the past, whether it's the, um, the tech bubble or whether it's the early 1970s, we've seen pretty significant drawbacks. So, you know, in excess of 40 percent. So that kind of concentration that those mag seven, big 10, you know, fab right. four, however you want to define it, is a, a risk that we're seeing today in, in today's markets. Marta, I want to thank you uh, for your perspective on the markets. Uh, we will see where things end the day uh, after what is already a pretty volatile morning and what has been a volatile week. Thank you very, very much. Have a great weekend.